The news at noon starts right now. Firefighters say that they have made some progress when it comes to fighting this big grass fire that's going on in the Hill Country right now. What is being called the Smoke Rider Fire has burned hundreds of acres in Blanco and Hayes County since yesterday afternoon. But fire crews say they have it about 30% contained now. Katrina Weber explains the biggest obstacle in this battle continues to be nature. Flames and smoke climbing skyward cause concern on the ground. Fire crews began assembling yesterday afternoon in an area west of Ranch Road 165 near Highway 290. They tried to beat back the fire that was moving quickly, crossing county lines from Blanco into Hayes. After fighting all night, they began seeing some small signs of relief this morning. Uh, yesterday, our crews made good progress using aircraft and using heavy equipment to begin con building containment line. That containment line now is 30 percent done. Still, Walter Flocky with the Forest Service says there's a long way to go toward putting it out and dousing the danger. At last count, about 800 acres had burned. It may be a while before investigators know how this fire started, but there's no question about how it spread. The lack of rain coupled with the winds and the dried grass all add up to the perfect storm. Like today with, with low humidity and, and even higher winds than yesterday, uh, you know, we're expecting fire elevated to near critical fire weather today. Extra crews stood ready this morning to help, keeping an eye on hot spots and making sure the fire didn't spread again. While it has been all hands on deck here, crews say people at home also can help. In these especially dry conditions, they urge everyone to be careful with anything that can cause a spark. Things like mowing your lawn, especially uh, in the heat of the day and dry grass. A small amount of extra care, they say, can prevent big problems like this. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Another wildfire burning west of Fredericksburg. Because of these two fires, officials have closed Enchanted Rock State Natural Area and Pedernales Falls State Park. Park officials say they will give updates on social media and urge people to use caution to check for road closures and plan ahead. This is the Big Sky Fire in Gillespie County. It broke out yesterday. It's burned 1,400 acres. It's about 25% contained. The Texas A&M Forest Service says firefighters responded to 16 new wildfires yesterday, and they burned approximately 341 acres so far. You look out there and you just feel for those people in the hill country knowing how dry it is, even people here in town knowing how medians and yards are dry. Man, it's a scary time. It's uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I want to kind of map out what you guys were just talking about with these fires, where they are. They're, they're well north of San Antonio, but... Uh, you know, it's just sort of a sign of the times. Th there were a lot of fires across Texas yesterday, as you guys pointed out, and that smoke rider fires right there on the Blanco and Hayes County line. And then uh, you have the uh, big sky one that you guys just mentioned there in Gillespie County. What about the smoke? Is it blowing in our direction? No, because we have the gusty southerly wind. So all that smoke is traveling north. Now the smoke plumes not as big as what this model is showing, but it gives us an idea of where that smoke is headed. There's still going to be some smoky skies up around Fredericksburg and Blanco likely. And let's talk about the fire danger for today. It's still there. In fact, it grows a little bit. You heard there in Katrina's story, uh, some lower humidity, at least in spots, and you've got the gusty winds and the extremely dry conditions and dry vegetation that puts us in a very high category in a lot of spots and here around San Antonio in a high category as far as the risk for wildfires is concerned. It does start to come down in the next few days, but we've got to watch it very, very closely with the winds uh, probably in the 10 to 20 mile per hour range today and gusting a little bit higher than that. No campfires or burn piles. You want to avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains and you don't want to park vehicles on grass. All these things can help prevent some of those grass fires. There is a little bit of rain in the forecast too. That always helps. We'll take a look at that for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. That is promising news. Thank you, Justin. Testimony continuing today in the trial of a man accused of killing his girlfriend and then leaving her body for her children to find. Jorge Esquerdo is facing a first degree murder charge in the August 2020 deadly shooting of Cora Nickel two years ago. Nickel was found with gunshot wound to the head by her two young daughters. If he is found guilty, he's facing up to life in prison. Uh, court reporter Eric Arnott says, because we'll have the latest on this trial a little bit later this afternoon. 
Also, this noon, deputies still trying to get to the bottom of a stabbing on the southeast side. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says someone stabbed a man inside a home on Gardner Road near New Sulphur Springs overnight. Deputies say that knife went into his back. Several people were inside the home when deputies arrived. They were detained for questioning. So far, BCSO hasn't said if deputies arrested anyone or why the victim was stabbed. It was one year ago that the city watched the capital murder trial of Otis McCain. For the first time ever, KSAT live streamed a trial from gavel to gavel. People were able to see and hear all of the evidence in the case. Well, now South Texas Crime Stories is taking a look back at SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi's death. It's the latest uh, in an episode, latest episode of our podcast. It's hosted by our own Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman. You can hear it right now on KSAT.com. As children return to class, parents might have some worries. That's right. We asked you to submit some of your questions on KSAT.com, and one of your biggest concerns was school safety. So we asked districts about their policies. Many ISD says it has made many safety improvements in recent years. That includes adding mental health police officers contracting a third party company to monitor social media for any concerning posts. Northside ISD says it's been inspecting multiple safety aspects at each of its campuses and there could be changes to some protocols and procedures. The district says any changes will be communicated to families at the campus level. Meantime, SAISD officials say the district's safety and security procedures are continually renewed and practiced. They include a campus safety committee that's tailored for each school, also a district-wide safety and security committee to help guide safety measures. You can read what else district officials had to say about all of this by visiting the Return to Class section of KSAT.com. Now to the latest on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. The speaker and her delegation left Taiwan early this morning, but concerns remain about what the enduring impact of Pelosi's visit could be for the relationship between China and the U.S. ABC's Justin Finch has more for us. This morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi meeting with the president of Taiwan and key members of its government defying threats from China. We have three purposes. One is security security for our people, global security. Two is economics, to spread as much prosperity as possible. And three is governance. Pelosi, now the highest ranking U.S. official in 25 years to visit Taiwan, a self-governing democratic island that split from China in 1949. But China still claims Taiwan as its own, and Beijing has not ruled out using military force to reclaim the territory. Many Democrats and Republicans supporting Pelosi's trip. So I'm about to use four words in a row that I haven't used in this way before, and those four words are, Speaker Pelosi was right. The Speaker's flight to Taiwan was guarded in secrecy, but the internet eventually caught on. Millions of people followed Pelosi's plane on FlightAware. The flight tracking app even crashed at one point from all the people trying to log on. As Taiwanese officials welcomed Pelosi, China announced military exercises will take place in the airspace and waters surrounding Taiwan. The Chinese government calling the speaker's visit a serious violation of the One China principle. Pelosi, meanwhile, defended her trip, writing, In the face of the Chinese Communist Party's accelerating aggression, our congressional delegation's visit should be seen as an unequivocal statement that America stands with Taiwan. At the White House, spokesman John Kirby urged China not to turn the visit into a crisis. We've been very clear that nothing has changed about our one China policy. We said we do not support Taiwan independence. Pelosi's plane to Taiwan reportedly took a three-hour detour to avoid any potential military conflicts. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Today, President Joe Biden expected to sign an executive order to attempt to bolster abortion rights in the Department of Health and Human Services. That order is going to be introduced at a new first meeting, the newly established Task Force on Reproduction Health Care Access. It allows HHS to consider all relevant actions to make sure that women get, quote, medically necessary care without delay, unquote. That will include giving health care providers the guidance they need to address legal restrictions in states where abortion restrictions have taken effect. Still coming up this half hour, a rookie tight end putting on an impressive show at Cowboys camp. Larry Mears with that coming up in sports.
Now in its 28th year, the San Antonio Film Festival is returning with more than 200 films and this year's six day festival taking place at the Radius Center in downtown. Tiffany Huertas gives us a sneak peek of what you can expect at this year's festival. Celebrating movies and the filmmakers themselves and the actors and the people behind the cameras. At the San Antonio Film Festival, you can catch feature films, documentaries, and works by San Antonians. It's basically three, three couples that live over 50 years in the same apartment. So one lives in the 70s, the next one in the 90s, and the next one in the 2020s. Jose Raul Corres is excited to share this film in his hometown. I, it's, it's a dream because it's, uh, when, when you are um, accepted by your peers, it's, it's way better than being accepted by anyone else. After each film screening, audience members will get an opportunity to hear from the filmmakers who are from Texas and from across the world. Sam Punto traveled from Germany to show his film this weekend, The Holding Room. I have a family from the area, and so obviously coming here is really great. Uh, it feels very personally welcoming. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. From mystery to comedy, there's something here for everyone. These are more humanistic stories. They're more touching. They're love stories. They're passionate filmmakers, passionate actors. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. The festival taking place all week until Sunday. Details and ticket information all can be found on KSAT.com. Back outside with live cam. Do we want to look at this? I mean, honestly, doesn't this look like the middle of winter? You know what you do now? You what? hunt for clouds. Look and see if you can see any clouds. Gotta, have, uh, gotta entertain yourself somehow with this. Smoke clouds. There's, well, there's like three there, I think. I see. Really? You gotta look really close. Okay. Well, there they are. It's like somebody's gonna like write up to their TV. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's uh, gonna write to you. I saw four. <laughs> we need some sort of shade, something. Uh, because we have less cloud cover today. You see that the blue skies and temperatures are racing upwards. The aquifer, no surprise here, down four tenths per foot to 630.9. We're about to drop into the 620s. That is not good. And the uh, in pollen count, molds are low at 250. We'll look at those rain chances, if uh, how good they look. That's coming up Friday and Saturday. That forecast is coming up. So th this is where we've come to now. So we were talking earlier, we're thinking it like sports. Like when the Spurs were really hot, they would like win, 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 win. So that's like all the 100 degree days. And then they'd have one loss. And that would be like below 90. I mean, below 100. Oh, I see. So I see the, the, yeah, the you see, you see where I'm going with this? So yeah. that's, that's what it's come to. We're, we're comparing we're it to it Spurs, Spurs season. season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, David season. was standing at my desk looking at seven day trying to explain this to me. And I was like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> what? I see where you're going with that, though. You're right. Uh, back in the Spurs heyday, right? Hundreds were wins. They would they would win 15 in a row, lose one. Very rarely was there a loss in the board. Yeah, we're we're gonna get some sub 100 temperatures, David. So I guess a couple bad days for the Spurs. That's yeah. The see, what, what's the most we've had so far in this uh, long stretch? Only like two, two, like two, two days. See, that's two losses back. in a row, and then they rebound. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's take you back to 1970. I want to take you guys back in history. Hurricane Ooh. Celia. Uh, this was a big one. It was a Category 3 hurricane that hit right at Corpus Christi. I mean, Corpus Christi took a direct hit on this one, caused 15 fatalities, 466 injuries. There was flood and wind damage in Del Rio, did quite a bit of damage there, in fact. And there was a tornado in Dilly that did quite a bit of damage. A third of the homes damaged in Corpus Christi. It brought some rain to San Antonio. This is one of the more memorable hurricanes here across South Texas. That's what the, the boats looked like in Corpus Christi after that hurricane came through. All the way back in 1970, you know, there are some parallels here. 1970 was a drought year, and that hurricane helped a little bit to put a dent in that, bringing some rain to South Texas. But we don't have any tropical moisture headed our way, at least not yet. Uh, so things are still pretty quiet here. Uh, outside, mostly sunny, 93 degrees at the airport, 95 cents and 94 Kelly, 94 at Randolph. We've got a good stout southerly wind, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. And the cloud cover for the most part, it stayed east of us. So you've got some of those clouds developing Gonzales, Victoria over to Howitzville, but not much here. And the last cloud cover you have, hotter those temperatures are. And uh, right now we're looking at 95 degrees in New Braunfels, 90 Kerrville, 95 Hondo, 95 Pleasanton already, 96 in Gonzales. And you pair that with some pretty high humidity. The heat indices are really jumping up off to the east of San Antonio. 
Uh, 91 hello to 88 right now. Bernie stage. Here's a look at the dew points. They have come down some since this morning. Dew points in the upper 60s, but we're still in the muggy territory and the heat index 98 again. I mentioned Gonzalez. Look at that. Feels like 104 and it's just noontime. 101. The feels like number in New Braunfels feels like 100 Hondo as well. Gusts, wind gusts, anywhere from 20 to 25 at the moment. So we're getting some of those good gusty winds, and that's the issue we're going to have with these grass fires that we've been talking about. The fire danger is there today. We showed this map a little bit earlier, but worth showing again, very high risk of grass fires today in those areas you see in orange. And uh, they're still fighting those fires up there across parts of Blanco and Gillespie counties. And that gusty wind does not help. 98 degrees, 2 o'clock today, 100 at 3 p.m., we're up around 103 today and then falling into the 80s eventually by 10 o'clock and uh, mostly clear skies. The heat index today, this is the feels like number. This is the projected number around 5 o'clock. 106 here in town. You go as high as 108. Gonzalez, 107. Forestville, 106 in Seguina. And this is why we have that heat advisory in place today. This is pretty dangerous heat. We're going to see this today and again tomorrow. Here's what we're watching, though. We mentioned yesterday there was a lot of rain around New Orleans. Still there. Still got some rain that's moved towards more central Louisiana at this point. But that's a little piece of energy that we're going to watch slide underneath the ridge and move into Texas. Unfortunately, our radar won't look like that. Once it moves in, it'll be weakened a little bit, and the ridge still has some influence on us. So by Friday, it's just a 20% chance of rain, and I think that's mainly east of I-35. As we get into Saturday, though, maybe a little better rain chance as this system pulls through. And then by Sunday, our rain chances go away again for the most part. So 103 today and tomorrow, 99 Friday, 98 Saturday. There's those sub 100 numbers David was talking about with a 20% chance of rain. And then we're back in the triple digits by next week. All right. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Three game losing streak right there. Yeah. <laughs> Fix that later. <laughs> Man, it's got to be tough when these guys work all off season. All they want to do is come in prove themselves, get a job, and boom, somebody lands on your foot. Yeah, uh, Cowboys wide receiver uh, James Washington spent first four years of his NFL career with the Steelers, so this is his first one with the Dallas Cowboys, and now he's going to be out, what, six to ten weeks with a broken right foot. We've got the latest on that injury coming up, plus what offseason improvements the Texans quarterback Davis Mills try to improve on coming up. Obviously, we still have a lot of time to go before um, captain voting, but I mean, I think I've I've worked hard. I know we have a lot of guys though have stepped up and been leading the team. So I don't know if I can pinpoint it entirely on myself, but I mean that's an honor. Texans quarterback Davis Mills is happy that head coach Lovey Smith said he's got his vote for team captain in big board sports. Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver James Washington is back in Dallas, where he will undergo foot surgery to repair a Jones fracture in his right foot that he suffered in the first day of pads. It happened on that play when Cooper Rush is looking for him on a deep route, only to have the pass broken up by Trayvon Diggs, who then falls on Washington's right foot with his knee. But teammate Jalen Tolbert told us Washington believes the injury happened before contact with Diggs. James mentioned, you know, he was in meetings with us and we all were talking with him and he mentioned he felt it while I was running down before the ball even, I guess, was thrown or in the air. And so uh, he thinks he did it before uh, contact, but, you know, that's a tough situation and I hate it for him. You know, he's a he's a big bro to me and helping me out. You know, he's a vet. And so, you know, him, him on the field telling me things that he's seen or helping me out out there was, you know, a big, big gig for me. Besides Tober, another rookie making a splash in Cowboys camp is tight end Jake Ferguson. The fourth round draft pick out of Wisconsin was first team all Big Ten selection in 2021 after he had a team high 46 receptions and 13 career touchdowns in three seasons. But what makes him even more attractive to the Cowboys is his ability to block. And now he has a better shot with the Cowboys moving on from Blake Jarwin. I was able to actually go to tight end U out in Nashville. So being able to listen to guys like George Kittle and Travis Kelsey and just learning stuff from them, um, I definitely got to get a little bit more comfortable to be able to pull out some of the stuff they were talking about. Um, but it's definitely in my piggy bank in the back of the head. 
Houston Texans are rolling right along as they get ready for the upcoming season. Quarterback Davis Mills preparing to begin his first season as a day one starter. Last year he didn't start until week three and he finished with only two wins to his name. But his performance over the final five games showed significant growth and he was actually fourth in the league in deep ball completion percentage. Now he was asked what are some of the things he worked on during the offseason to improve. A lot of it, I mean, with the new offense is making sure, first I have command and control of this offense, make sure I'm on on all the details, and then personally just making sure I'm able to make every throw. We um, kind of pinpointed and saw the, like, the shot shot chart from or the throw chart from across the field and saw the different percentages and I had a couple boxes where I needed to work on so I focused on those type of throws just making sure my my feet and my body were in line to make all those throws so um, but the, I mean the biggest thing is just coming out and being ahead of, ahead of schedule in the playbook so you can come out and play fast. I love you Smith and his guys are practice today before the players take tomorrow off. You hope Davis has a good season. For yeah. Him. Absolutely. The coach who's back at him and the fans who right. could use a few wins. More than a few. <laughs> <laughs> Humans could start living on the moon sooner than you may think. It's an idea, David, and it might be thanks to caves. We're going to explain wow. in the next half hour. We could broadcast from the moon. We could. An experimental treatment for monkeypox could help those in communities where cases are rising. The U.S. government stockpiled nearly 2 million doses of the drug, however, some doctors say it's still not easy to access. Details are coming up. Now to the latest on the battle over abortion rights in Kansas. Voters overwhelmingly choosing to keep abortion legal, rejecting a proposed amendment to the state constitution that would have invalidated that right in Kansas. It was the first vote on abortion following the Supreme Court's decision striking down Roe v. Wade. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. It was the first vote on abortion rights in post-Roe America, and it ended with a major victory for pro-abortion rights groups after voters in Kansas overwhelmingly decided to protect the legal right to abortion care in the conservative, traditionally red state. I am, like a lot of people in this room, feeling very proud to be a Kansan. Voters blocked an amendment that would have erased protections from the state's constitution, meaning lawmakers could have enacted tighter restrictions or an outright ban. And anti-abortion rights activists outraged. If the last 50 years haven't shown anything, we've been fighting, I, we're not going to stop fighting. At least 14 states have seized nearly all abortion services. The Justice Department taking legal action for the first time since Roe versus Wade was reversed less than six weeks ago, filing suit against the state of Idaho to try and block its law that only allows doctors to perform abortions when a woman is at risk of death rather than risk of serious harm. When a hospital determines that an abortion is the medical treatment necessary to stabilize a patient's emergency medical condition, it is required by federal law to provide that treatment. President Biden signing an executive order today to pave the way for Medicaid to pay for out-of-state abortion services. And back to Kansas, President Biden released a statement saying this does make clear that the majority of Americans do support the right to an abortion. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A tech issue is to blame for millions of faulty credit scores that were served up to Americans who were looking to get a loan. Equifax admits inaccurate data was sent out during a three-week period earlier this year. These false credit scores resulted in some people getting higher interest rates and others just simply being denied. Officials at Equifax say that the coding issue that caused the problem has been resolved. Equifax handles credit information for more than 200 million consumers in the U.S. Back in 2017, Equifax was hacked, exposing people's private information, which affected 150 million Americans. Nearly 100 million people in the U.S. are under heat advisories that cover more than half of the country over the next three days, from the southern plains to the northeast. And don't we know it here? Northeast advisories are in effect tomorrow and Friday. Heat advisories went into effect today at noon in eastern areas of eastern Kentucky, where they are still recovering from those devastating deadly floods. The temperatures could approach 100 degrees and expect it to be made worse by lingering power outages. First responders and residents are particularly vulnerable to high heat index values through tomorrow. Meantime, here at home, we are looking at another hot day. We're hoping for a little rain over the weekend. That grass is just too brown. Uh, everything is brown and crunchy, and 
The heat advisory, we have that in effect for us today. I should point out, though, the heat advisories are relative to where you live. So you, know, you heard some places getting up to 100. You may ask, well, we've been above 100 every day. Why, we ha why haven't we had a heat advisory every day? Because it depends on where you live. Places up in the Pacific Northwest don't have AC. Some places don't. So that's why a heat advisory would be different for them than it is here. Anyway, you, you see where all the heat advisories are across the country stretching from San Antonio, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Memphis, St. Louis, Chicago, all the way up to Detroit, and then the metro cities there on the East Coast seeing some heat advisories as well. Large portion of the country baking. Once again, this ridge of high pressure is just does not want to give up. And you see the highs today, 101 in Wichita, 103 Dallas will be around 103 here in San Antonio. And heat index probably around 105, 106. Uh, here in town and we could see some heat indices as high as 108, which is why that heat advisory is in place this afternoon. Temperatures right now are 95 in New Braunfels, 96 in Gonzales. It is already 97 in Pleasanton. Some of these places could be near 100 by next hour. So things are progressing very quickly here. We're in the mid 90s in most spots here around San Antonio as well. And we expect to be up around 103. So your weather headlines Elevated fire danger today. We're going to give you another update on those fires coming up and then heat advisory in effect, as we said, for heat advisories here in town or heat indices here in town as high as 105, 106. And yes, there still is some rain in the forecast Friday and Saturday. Small chances. We'll time that out for you coming up, guys. We definitely want to hear more about that. Thank you, Justin. In San Antonio, the cases of monkeypox have remained steady at 13 since Friday. However, some communities are seeing a rise in cases. Three states have declared public health emergencies. There's a drug available for monkeypox patients who have severe disease or who are at risk of it. But CNN's Mandy Gaither reports doctors say that the drug continues to be hard to get. California and Illinois now join New York State declaring a public health emergency over the monkeypox outbreak. The U.S. is now leading the world when it comes to the total number of cases. Across the U.S., more than 5,800 confirmed cases. The virus found in every state but two, Wyoming and Montana, according to the CDC. T-pox is considered an experimental treatment for monkeypox. It was FDA approved for smallpox, a virus in the same family. While there's no human trial data to prove it's effective in treating monkeypox, the CDC says doctors may want to use T-pox in those with symptoms in hazardous areas like the eyes and people with severe symptoms symptoms like sepsis or people at risk of severe illness like those who are immunocompromised. Anecdotally, two, three doses of this T-pox medicine is really making a difference for people and these lesions are just melting away. The U.S. government stockpiled nearly two million doses of the drug in case of a bioterrorism event, despite the CDC and FDA cutting some red tape for monkeypox patients to get the antiviral drug. Some say it's still hard to access. You're talking about a five, six day time lag to get that medication to you at a, at a local doctor's office, no matter where you are. And the paperwork and all of the bureaucracy to make that happen is very cumbersome, takes a few hours of your time. And that's the barrier. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now, although some doctors have reported cases in which they think the T-pox vaccine may have been beneficial, the CDC says evidence of how well it works in humans has been limited to drug levels in blood and a few case studies. One of the biggest concerns for the Dallas Cowboys this season is the D-line. Larry Ramirez was one of the players expected to plug up a few holes. There are a lot of things keeping folks from moving to the moon. One of them, yeah, the temperatures are awful. Now NASA says it may have found an area that could be safe for us to live in one day as a shelter. And those areas stay at a cool 63 degrees. More travelers are booking with Airbnb. The company said it had nearly 104 million bookings during the three month period that ended in June. That is a new quarterly high, which led to record setting profits. Analysts say this shows the travel sector is showing signs of recovering from the pandemic. If you want to take a trip to space, you'll need a chaperone. 
NASA says a former astronaut will have to come along for the ride during private missions. This week, NASA posted an online notice that included numerous requirements for upcoming private missions. NASA came up with these rules after the first private space mission last year. That trip was organized by Axiom Space, and it was comprised of three paying crew members and an Axiom employee who was a former NASA astronaut. The requirement has yet to be finalized, but NASA officials say having a legitimate astronaut on board provides proper experience and guidance for the mission. This year, the summer Texas heat, ugh, it might have you looking for a shelter. And one day, that could mean you need to go to the moon. Scientists say there are parts of the moon where you can actually find steady temperatures of about 63 degrees. That's a huge difference compared to the moon's surface, which heats up to 260 degrees during the day and drops down to a, a minus 280 at night. The comfortable temperatures can be found in areas scientists describe as the makings of caves. Research recently published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters shows the moon has pit craters which could be turned into caves and the stable temperatures there could give you a good place for shelter. The study co-author says this new information could help NASA pick up the pace on designing a workable permanent station up there. <laughs> Not a bad idea this summer. That well, with this nice. kind of heat, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people, you know, raising their hand. I'll, I'll go test it out for you. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, though. It's the moon. You get it. There are no good restaurants. <laughs> no. Uh, 93 degrees so far today. 97 is the average high, obviously, again, above average today. 103 is a record. We should be right there at the record, I think, by, say, 4 or 5 o'clock. 1895 is when that record was last set. Uh, 79 was the low this morning, above average too. More above average temperatures on the way. Maybe a little bit of some relief by Friday. We'll take a look, coming up. Could you handle a constant 63 degrees though? I could. Could you? I could, compared to this, yeah. He couldn't, we know that. <laughs> Justin would be whining and complaining Man. all no, hold day on. long. Hold on, I don't, get, I don't get electric bills on the moon, so. <laughs> That's true. That helps. True. <laughs> uh, let's talk about dust. Uh, the Saharan dust is making its way across the Atlantic, and we're seeing another plume try to make its way into Texas here. Now, again, this is not going to be thick. It's going to be a very light haze. I really don't, really don't think this causes a lot of issues. Uh, but by Thursday evening, there could be some dust around, and then it looks like most of this dissipates by Friday and Saturday. So. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a big, big problem. It's definitely thicker as you get out over the uh, open Atlantic, and then it definitely goes away by uh, Saturday evening. Let's go outside for you. Clear skies now. I mean, some nice blue skies. Problem is that temperature is really cranking up. 93 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 68. Feels like 97. That is the current heat index, and satellite picture shows we've got very little in the way of clouds. Uh, in fact, it is basically sunny here, minus maybe one or two clouds in the sky. Now, as you go east, you will run into some partly cloudy skies east of Gonzales around Howitzville and LaGrange. But the longer these skies stay clear, uh, the more these temperatures are really going to ramp up. 94 degrees at Port SA, 95 Stinson, 97 Pleasanton, 94 Seguin, 97 down there in Divine. You're at 92 right now in Kerrville. And the dew point trend today. Well, we started off in the 70s, but we're trending downward. We've, we've already got dew points in this uh, upper 60s now. We probably end up in the low 60s. That's still enough to create a heat index anywhere from 104 to 106. And that is in that sort of danger zone where we, we have the heat advisories now in place. The current heat index in New Braunfels is now up to 101. Already feels like 103 in Gonzales and 102 in Pleasanton. A lot of places are starting to see heat indices in the triple digits that happens here soon in san antonio too so just beware gusty winds helps cool us down some it's nice that there is a good breeze but the other side to this is this creates that fire danger we were talking about earlier these gusty winds were really fueling the flames yesterday smoke rider fire there in blanco county 800 acres it's only 30 percent contained and then the big sky fire up in gillespie county 25 percent contained it's 1400 acres so they're still fighting those fires and the conditions today probably aren't helping much. This is the smoke forecast and this overdoes the amount of smoke that's coming from these fires. We're not seeing that on satellite picture, but it just gives you an idea of kind of where the smoke is going based on the winds. Everything's kind of feeding north. The fire danger today, 
fairly extensive across parts of the hill country, even here in San Antonio down into the southwest. That's where we have a very high risk of wildfire danger. And let's look at tomorrow and see kind of how it compares to today. And it's a little bit less. It, it, it's better than I think than uh, today. It's more of a sort of a moderate risk in spots. So not as bad, but we still have to be very careful. Uh, temperatures today 98 degrees by 2 o'clock, 100 by 3 p.m. We're up around 103 by 5 o'clock, 98 by 7 p.m. And then tonight falling down into the 80s with mostly clear skies. And the forecast heat index today, 106 here in town, 107 in Forestville, 107 in Castroville. These numbers are going to be pretty significant around 5 o'clock. So be extra careful. That's why that heat advisory is in place. And the, the heat high is still sort of uh, taking over our weather, but we do have a little disturbance that rolls underneath it that gives us an outside chance for some showers and maybe a storm Friday into Saturday. We're sticking with that forecast, 20% both days, and that should drag temperatures down just a little bit. So 103 today and tomorrow, 99 Friday, 20% chance of rain, same on Saturday. 99 Sunday, and then back in the triple digits by Monday and Tuesday, guys. I never thought that we would like want the hurricane season to just go ahead and get started in the Gulf. Something. You know, just just a tropical depression. Anything. Yeah, a little bit of rain. Thank you. Yep. We've been talking a lot about the Cowboys offense, but the, their defense doesn't get much better than not gonna matter, not gonna matter much. Yeah, and uh, Neville Gallimore is one guy the Cowboys are really relying on this year. He didn't play but what five games last season because he hurt an elbow in the preseason, so he's looking to play every game this year and he goes one on one with Greg Simmons plus we lost a legend last night, the voice of the L.A. Dodgers, coming up. Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy recently said defense wins championships, but the Super Bowl is won by the quarterback. Now, Dallas is long overdue among the NFL storied franchises to win it all. And Dak wants to be the QB to lead the boys back. Defensive tackle Neville Gallimore is right there with them. Let's go to Cali where Greg Simmons has more. Hey, what's going hey, on? hey yourself. What's going How's on? camp? been going good so far. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely taking some steps. Can you say taking steps? Yes. Steps to improve, obviously. Absolutely. Steps to improve. Steps to improve. Where do you think you need the most improvement? Um, just, you know, the big, biggest thing I'm always working on is just consistency. Right. And, you know, and, you know, the, uh, I appreciate, you know, just kind of how the practice is set up because it puts us in a lot of situational football. Because, you know, obviously we understand this game is more mental than it is physical, and it is a physical game. Last year, what a setback in just that preseason game when you, what, dislocated your elbows? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how frustrating was that for you? Because I thought at that point you were going to make a solid contribution in the season opener, if not more, right? Right, right. Um, you know, it was definitely frustrating, you know, um, just because, you know, you, <clears throat> you've improved, you've done a lot of things during camp up until that point, and, you know, you're, you're getting excited at that point when it happened. You know, the season was literally right around the corner. Right there to grab, right? You know what I mean? But it gave me an opportunity to be a student game, but, you know, the guys were just like, hey, man, just don't worry, patience, get, get yourself back right, and when you come back, it's time to go. So, if anything, that motivated me more. And when you was your time to play, you made an instant impact, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. And that was that because you were just um, so I, pent up with everything? Look, look yeah, man, it, it, it's funny. It's like, you know, it's true what they say. You don't know what you have until it's gone. I kind of got a little glimpse of that. Getting that opportunity again is like, okay, that kind of remind me how much I do love the game. You hit the reset button this year. You're ready to go. What can you contribute to this team and to <clears throat> arguably one of the best defenses in the league this year? Absolutely. And it, it's really, you know, just that, you know, that, that anchor in the middle, you know, that, that, that energy, you know, that, that that person that can really, you know, set the tone in the middle and, and make things happen. You know, obviously, going into my third year, I got high expectations for myself, and as well as my, you know, the guys next to me and my coaches got high expectations for me. So it's my job to, to match that and, you know, to surpass that. And I'm that's what I'm aiming to do. That's great news. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, great to have you with us Appreciate again. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thanks again.
Hall of Fame broadcaster Vin Scully, who entertained and informed Dodgers fans in Brooklyn and Los Angeles for 67 years, passed away last night. He was 94. Scully died at his home in the Hidden Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles, according to the team. After being informed by family members, no cause of death was provided. In Texas League Baseball, the Missions beat the Wichita Wind Surge 4-3 last night. Missions second baseman Connor Hollis extended his hitting streak to 13 straight games. Vince Scully had some of the greatest calls you'll ever hear. Yes, he did. It was awesome. Yep. All right, Larry, thank you. All right, we're going to head over to SA Live now. Mike and Jen, what you got for us? Oh, well, it's still back to school week, and we have got a whole bunch going on today. Yes, Stephanie Pena Frost is here with some fun snack ideas, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So today we're going to be making sushi, donuts, and ice cream, but not what you think. It's all going to have a healthy, healthy, uh, healthy aspect to it. Oh, that sounds okay. really good. Sounds okay, delicious. so that's for the kids' tummies and for their minds. Shannon Schumacher, Kid Create Studio. What are you doing over here? So we're usually all about art, but for back to school, we're adding in some science. So I have some vegetable oil, some water, and an Alka-Seltzer tablet, and you don't want to miss what happens when we mix them all. Interesting. I'm excited. Yes, and if you need some help organizing at home as you prepare to head back to school, Hi, I'm Esme and I'm a professional organizer. Today we're going to help you create the ultimate homework station on any budget. Stay tuned. Today on SA Live, cheetahs never prosper, but you know what? These guys aren't doing too bad. We're gonna introduce you to the newest additions here at Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch and how you can see them. So many things for the kids, but we need something for mom yeah, and dad. Yeah, oh, yeah. yes, right the on cue. Wine Wednesday. Little wine, <laughs> little charcuterie. Board couple's going to be here. They have some really, really big announcements. What's going to uh -huh. be going on? Yeah, we're celebrating Ooh. somebody's birthday, too. Ooh. Yeah. That and much more coming up on SA Live. <gasps> Explorers showing off a number of artifacts from a Spanish ship that sank centuries ago. The nearly 900 ton vessel went underwater after, after it collided with one of the boats from its own fleet, and then it crashed into a coral reef near the Bahamas. It was carrying a lot of cargo when it went under, and millions of items have been recovered. It includes coins, jewels, gemstones that previously belonged to knights. These items are going to be displayed later on this month at the new Bahamas Maritime Museum. Researchers also say that they're going to work with experts to try to figure out how this ship met its fate. Some Christmas gift ideas. <laughs> there you go. I look expensive. Uh, 96 degrees uh, so far now. We're going to be up around 103 tomorrow and or today and tomorrow. And then there's some small chances of rain Friday and Saturday. 20% chance rain both days. Highs in the upper 90s. Let's hope, hope we get something here around South Texas. Either one of those days, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. And we're reminded. Yeah, it's a very it's special a day. Very special day. This is, I think, the day that Mike Osterhage catches up to me in age. Oh, does he? Mm-hmm. All right. It's Mike Osterhage's birthday, so you know this is going to be a fun SA Live. Congratulations, happy birthday, and SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Right. Thank you very much. I had a feeling they were going to be coming out. I, what was I, your I, first clue? Uh, yeah, what, yes, and they all come. Was it the balloons? Uh, was it the balloons? Yes, yes it was. You know, <laughs> my wife and my two yes. wonderful sons here. Good afternoon. It, 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 thank you, Rod. It is a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you yes. very much for that. I'm Mike Osterhage. He's Mike Osterhage. Yes, I'm Jen Tobias Chusky. Now, we have a fun question for you. If you could pick one free thing for the rest of your life, would it be gas? Groceries, house cleaning, or massages? We'll let the birthday boy I answer. I think that's an easy one. Groceries. Yes, because that's I'm the one you. of the four things. That's one thing you have to have. Yes. 
Yes. So I'd go with groceries. I know Stephanie mentioned. Can you go to the steak aisle clean. the whole time too? You know, and all, the, all the really good stuff. So pick out what you want, and then they just yeah. Pay but for with it. the price of gas nowadays, I mean, That's true. <laughs> free gas for the rest of your life would be pretty nice too. So yeah, let us know. We may share your answers a little later in the show. Just tag us on our social media pages. Okay, our back to school weeks continues, and if you want someone to get excited about something, you talk about food. These back to school snack ideas will have your students itching to start their first day and getting home from school for a nice after school snack. Yes, you gotta make it fun, right? Stephanie Penny Frost is here to do just that from Princess and the Monkey Home Decor. You have some clever yes. snack ideas. I love the combo because it's some of the sugary stuff, but you also have a healthy twist. Exactly. Right? This is a good way to get your kids to eat more fruit, especially when they come home from school and they're tired and they want something to do. Well, these are things that you can make ahead and, and prep and have in the refrigerator for them that's easy for them to come home and pull out and make and kind of give them some interactive things to do with it as well. And since you eat with your eyes and it yes. makes it, instead of just going here have an apple right you dress it up a little bit or have a banana or something and so. it gives them something to do to kind of wind down and get that energy out of them when they get yes. home okay so Mike I'm gonna have you do uh, a banana sushi so you just take a, a tortilla and you spread uh, peanut butter you could do Nutella you could do jam kind of make it you know kind of put all the fun things that they like to eat and then you do the banana in the middle roll it up and um, it's really messy, and it's but it's really good. And, and who doesn't <laughs> love tortillas, right? And exactly. Bananas. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to do something healthy, you could do like a like a wheat tortilla or a gluten free tortilla or an organic mm -hmm. tortilla, something like that. And that way it gives a little bit of a healthier option as well. And I feel like most people have this in Whoops. their pantry or at home, so you can just exactly. kind of put that little twist on it. Exactly, all, all oh, yeah. of these things are just go. pantry items that you yeah. already have access to, and you never know like how to create and what to do with them. Now, so, if you were to do this ahead of time mm -hmm. and have it all ready for when the kids came put home. Put it in the refrigerator. Would, banana, would it turn brown a it little bit? It might turn or? a little bit brown, okay. but I would cut it and I kind of like stack it together. That way they just pull it up and oh, uh, perfect, you could easily. Yeah, so you it kind of keeps that, that, that okay. contact. And now uh, for you, Jen, we're going to do a, t a take on donuts. It's a healthier take. You take an, an apple, cut them into slices. Mm -hmm. um, you could also put this in the refrigerator as well, put a little bit of lemon juice on it, and it keeps them from getting like horribly, horribly green. I mean, uh, brown on the mm -hmm. green apple. Yes, the lemon always and helps with yes, that. Yes, lemon mm -hmm. definitely always helps. And then you want to take the take a, a lot of it. Take a lot okay. of the topping. <laughs> d d d be, it's, yeah, be, yes. be generous. My little ones would like a lot. To and you spread it on there, and then you top it with their favorite treats. You could do granola. You could do who doesn't love a good Captain Crunch cereal or any of the other yes. type of favorite cereals. Um, chocolate, the little the little mini chips, uh, coconut. Put some, you can also put some honey on top of it, kind of make it. And also we were talking about if you wanted to pre-slice the apples, like yes, you said, exactly. lemon juice, and then have Ooh. maybe a container, uh, one of those divided up. Um, yes, the little bento box type of yes, lunch, so lunch boxes. With some of the, the goodies in there, and the kids could come home, grab it out of the fridge, decorate and it up themselves, and all set to go. Put it all together. And then the last okay. thing we're going to do is a healthy take on ice cream. So you take these ice cream cone cups, and you pre-cut up. The, the fruit, you make your mm -hmm. own fruit salad. And you mix the, the, the whipped cream into the cut up fruit, or you can layer it if you oh. want. Okay, I'm just gonna throw some in yeah. here. Yeah. And um, you can do it with or without the, the whipped cream. Mm -hmm. uh, make it look like a nice little ice cream fruit salad, and then just put it in the cup. You can even get the chocolate filled cups. I mean, there's so many fun things that you could do with that. You know what? I'm going to add some Ooh, chocolate like yeah. chips in there too. Why not? Exactly. You kind of make it, make it, once again, it's about making lunch, ma making these snacks fun. And I like that you can just give them the cone, right? Give them the cone. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to dirty up yet another thing. And it makes it fun for them to eat too, because who doesn't like a little ice cream? Okay, this is a great <laughs> little idea. It's I love so this simple. little it's like a, it's like, there. It's like your own Sunday bar, your ice yeah. cream bar, but not without ice cream, with a healthy snack. Fruits. And they can do this And themselves. they can do them. And it's, <laughs> like you said, whipped cream or, or Cool Whip or something non-dairy. Something non-dairy if, if, if they have a dairy allergy. And you can cut all this, you know, pre-cut it. Once again, it's in the refrigerator and it's something they could just pull out. Another really fun thing that they mm -hmm. can do are these fun little yogurt yogurt snacks. I take gogurt and it's a natural gogurt without any uh, additional colors. Mm -hmm. And you drop little pieces onto saran wrap, throw it in the freezer, you put it into um, a Ziploc bag, oh, and they I'm can take one of these. They, they could, oh, okay. There there you go. You could take it and eat it, and it's <laughs> just like little candies. Mm. And it's super. It, it's something fun that they can pop in their mouth. You could have a bag of those already oh, in cool. the freezer. 
just ready to go. Super yes. simple. Now, where can people find you? Because That's you have a market good. coming up, right? So, so this weekend, um, I'll be with, with my art over at the Holotus Marketplace um, this Saturday from 9 to 3 o'clock in, in downtown Holotus. All right, to check out the original creations from Princess and the Monkey Home Decor, you can find Stephanie, as she just said, this Saturday, August 6th, at the Marketplace at Old Town Holotus. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information, you can head over to our website, salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Great you, after school. Thank you very much. Great after school snacks. And of course, you know, the busy school routine can sometimes be a little overwhelming, a little bit yes. chaotic, uh -huh. but one way to help is to really get organized. Yes, and today we get help from the pros at Sort It Out. It's a local organizing company, and they're going to help us create a few things. Take a look. Hi, I'm Esme Gonzalez with Sorted Out Organizing. We specialize in helping people save time and money by decluttering their homes and organizing any room or the entire house. So today we're going to show you how to set up a home workstation for your child on any budget. So today's home workstation, we've, we have a few options for you. There's a pullout cart with rollers, which works wonders. It's so easy. You can pull this out as homework time rolls around. You, if you have space in your home next to your desk, dining room table, or kitchen table, you can pull this out from a closet. Or if space allows, you can just have it nearby in the room. In the cart today, we've got bins and baskets that are very affordable from General Dollar Store and Dollar Tree, as you can see. They come in sets, and most everything we purchased was $1.25 for the sets. You can also, if you have labels, label each bin, and labeling helps children put things back where they belong. It's so helpful and keeps the cart organized. If you don't have labels, you can use colored tape if you'd like, or even clear packing tape, and you can write what the category is for that bin. This is an affordable option as you can see. This cart came specifically from Target. However, you can find carts just like this at, on Amazon, at the Container Store, and Walmart. So we can tuck this away when homework is completed, but I'd like to show you another option to fill the cart with bins to keep your categories organized. You can rummage through your home for jewelry boxes, for little pottery trays or ceramic trays. These bins here were used in a pantry several years ago for things like this. So these are perfect for stuff you can find around the house. That's option number two. Option number three are a little fancy and these are bins and trays from the container store. Again, all different sizes, and these bins fit perfectly in our cart today. So the trick to running a smooth and efficient household with a schedule is to be regular and consistent with your routine. This routine should be carried out by your parent or both parents on a daily basis. With the new school year comes different schedules, routines, and chores, not just for the kids, but the entire family. It changes because maybe your kids are going to school for the first time and your older kids are involved in different extracurricular activities. There are many, many tips and suggestions on how to organize a home and it should be customized and specialized for each child and family member. A real easy command center for the children and your family is simply maybe a cork bulletin board and maybe even a dry erase calendar. It's fun to color code each child with their own special color, favorite color, because when they look at the chart or the bulletin board, they see that Jenny's color is pink, that Billy's color is black, so they know exactly where to go to to find what they're doing that day or that week. These are just a few tips to get you through the school year because when school starts, it can be chaotic and hectic. This will help you stay organized through the year. And of course, Esme does a lot more organizing for people, but uh, those printable calendars are available on her website, which we have on our website. So good to know, they're free. Because when you've got practices yes. and classes and this and that, and yes. yeah. Carpooling, all the things, it's about to get crazy. But yes, we hope that can help you stay more organized. SALive.com, click on the SE on SA Live tab tab or just got thinking calendar or just click that QR code right there at the bottom of your screen. Coming up on SA Live where you can see cheetahs on a Texas style safari.
But first, do your kids need a little extra help getting excited about learning? How you can sneak in important lessons while having tons of fun at this local studio. That's next on SA Live.